so worthy, worthy to be praised. Yes. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. We give you all the yes. glory, Lord. You are yes, worthy. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord. We, we invite you in this place. Yes, we invite your presence here tonight, Lord. Have your way in each and every one yes. of our hearts. Yes, Lord. You are worthy. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we trust you, Lord. We just ask, Lord, I ask right now that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable before you. Yes, Father. That your word would go out and accomplish what it, what it set out to do. That the word of God would just touch each and every one of us tonight, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Let's do the worship around the house. Man, that's so good. Let's thank God for who he is, man. He's such a good God. We touched on so much this week, man. A lot about the Holy Spirit. Because what I'm trying to get people to see is that we can't do this walk without the Holy Spirit, man. Man, opposition is out there. There's things that's going to come up against us, but we need the Holy Spirit to move on our behalf, to move in us. And he, 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 has, he has what we need to defeat the enemy. Amen. Because we can't defeat the enemy. And so tonight, I want to talk about, I talked about a lot of things this week, but I want to talk about the heart condition. Because the very result of what the sin nature is from, it's from our heart condition. I want to read some things here for you before I get to the foundational scripture that we're about to read. And this is the first time you'll ever, you'll ever hear me read out of news headlines because I don't watch the news. But I did this because I want to try to set a, set a foundation here. And it says, authorities in Idaho began investigating Val Daybell and her husband after other family members said they hadn't heard from the couple's kids in months and reported them missing in November 2019. Police said the kids were last seen in Rexburg, Idaho, on September 23, 2019. The pair soon left Idaho and fled to Hawaii in December 2019, authorities said. They found the couple in Cowie, Hawaii, January 2020, without the kids. The couple was eventually extradited to Idaho. Authorities found the kids' decomposed bodies in Chad Baybell, eastern Idaho backyard, in June 2020. Five people are dead after being shot in a home by a suspect armed with an AR-15 style rifle, police said. The incident occurred at approximately 11.31 p.m. local time when officials from San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office received a call about harassment in Cleveland, Texas, a small town located about 55 miles north of Houston. A man charged in, killing of, in the killing of a three-month-old girl in Arlington. In April 2023, Office of the Chief Medical Examiner determined the baby had been killed. The cause of her death was complications of blunt force, injury to her head. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 17, 9. Can you put that scripture up there for me, please? And this is what the Word of God says. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Incurably sick. Who can know it? Who can know the heart of man besides God? So I was reminded about the heart of man uh, this past uh, few days here. Sandy and I, we went to a, a banquet. And uh, I won't get into uh, detail about everything, but I had asked myself, Lord, why does racism still exist? Why do people still have these false ideologies and try to justify them with the Bible and by twisting scripture and trying to conform the scripture into their false beliefs instead of allowing scripture to transform their lives? Mm. And then the Lord reminded me, he said, Jason, it's their heart condition. Mm -hmm. The question stands is, what is the ultimate cure for this? How do we rid ourselves of this wicked disposition that we have in this world today? And the Lord said, it's a new heart. Mm -hmm. It's a new heart. We need a, a new heart. Mm -hmm. And let me give you a description of what the Bible 
how the Bible describes the heart. The heart is, in the Bible, it says that the heart is considered the seat of life or strength. It means mind, soul, spirit, or one's entire emotional nature and understanding. One's entire emotional nature and understanding. We are born with a messed up heart condition, he said. And that's why in Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 through 27, he prophesied about how this heart condition was going to be solved and how we were going to be brought back into the right heart condition. He says, a new heart is what he prophesied. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we need the Holy Spirit. We're right back at the same place we've been all week. We need the Holy Spirit of God to change. This is impossible for man to do on, in their own strength. We need the power of God, the living power of God that moves and breathes and where we have our very being to help us. Our hearts are tainted. They're messed up. The heart of man wants what it wants when it wants it. And sometimes it doesn't care how it gets it and doesn't care who it has to step on to get what it wants. So what's revealed about the law and the heart is that goes with the heart of man. The law was made to reveal sin and to reveal the fact that man's heart condition is desperately wicked. Man is desperately wicked and we all need Jesus. It was never possible for man to be able to keep the law flawlessly to perfection. And if man was, was capable in his heart to follow these rules in his own strength, there would have been no need for Jesus Christ to come. There wouldn't have been a need for the Lamb of God to step down from his glory to come into our mess to save us from this treacherous condition. So to really get the jest of the heart and really find out what the heart condition is and how how what it does and, 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 and how it how it responds to things, we have to understand what Luke chapter 8 says. Because we really want to take a look at how the heart is ground for things to grow and cease to be planted in us. And we need to find out why this heart condition, this heart soil is so important to nurture and to allow the right seeds to take root and grow. We have to allow the right people in our lives to, to, to help us, to, to, to speak life into us and not death. Amen. It's a heart condition. Amen. So Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. And he says, And when much people were gathered together and would come out of every city, he spake by a parable. He says, The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the bowels of the air devoured, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture, and some fell, upon, it fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it. Excuse me, one moment. I left some stuff behind me. Some papers I need. <coughs> I'm like, this is very short. How did I do that? <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> so, Jesus explained this parable in Luke chapter 8, verses 11 through 16. And he says that, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. We need the seed of the word of God to come into our hearts to transform our lives. Amen. We can't be concerned with what the news says. We can't be concerned with what our friends say. We have to be concerned with what the word of God is saying. And he says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. 
Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. We have to guard our soil, people. There's a devil in us. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he says, lest they should believe and be saved. The devil does not want you to believe, and he surely does not want you to be saved. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to continue with every fiber in my being to soap a mud hole in the devil's back until I leave this earth. Hallelujah. That's my mission. To tear down the kingdom of darkness and to expose the lies of the enemy. Amen. That's my mission. And 13 says, he says, they own, they on the rock are they, which when they hear, they hear the word, they receive the word with joy, and these have no root. We need root in our lives, folks. Amen. We can't stand on our own and think that we know it all. We need the root. We need the root of the word of God to penetrate our hearts. And he goes on, listen to this, what he says, because this is what happens a lot of times in, in our walk. He says, these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, they fall away. No root. No, no root. No root. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. How many of us are choked with the cares and the pleasures and the riches of this life and not yielded to God and care about the riches of his riches and glory? Amen. We have to change our perspective, folks. We have to keep our eyes Focus on Jesus Christ. There's so, I talked about this so much this week. There's so many things that are designed by the enemy to distract us and pull us away from the glory of God and being yielded to him because he wants us yielded to him. Amen. And then what happens when we yield to him, our lives become a mess, bit by bit. Because he, he doesn't come out straight up in your face and, and, and try to t steal, kill, and destroy it. He's going to come out a little bit by a little bit by a little bit. And before you know it, you're down in the pit and you're looking up, how did I get here? You want to know how you got there? You want to give it to God. You let the word of God take root in your heart. And he says, it's choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, this heart condition, man, is serious. We got to be pure and clean before the Lord. It's like I said last night. We have to live our life from a posture of repentance. Mm -hmm. We have to live our life from a posture of praise and worship. From a posture of reading the word. From a posture of having a clean heart. And he says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, they keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. See, the enemy does not want the word to penetrate your heart and take root because he does not want it to bring forth fruit. Because if you bring forth fruit, then others are going to start bringing forth fruit. And you're going to start, you're going to start having an effect on the people that are around you. The devil does not want us to move forward in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because he, is, he does not want you to be saved he doesn't want your family to be saved. He doesn't want your kids to be saved. If he had his way, he'd have this whole world in his hand, in the palm of his hand right now, crushing the life out, out of each and every person in there, if he had his way. So it says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep the word, and bring forth fruit with patience. No man when he had lighted a candle, this is good right here. Cover it with, with a vessel. This is why this is why he doesn't want the word of God to take root. He says, cover it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, set it on the candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. Amen. The enemy don't want them to see the light. Hallelujah. Now the question we have to ask ourselves is: 
How is that possible and how is it supposed to happen? Well, we're right back to the same statement again. It's the Holy Spirit when we become in Christ Jesus. Because when we become in Christ Jesus, things start shifting in the supernatural that no one can explain except for him. And we may not have an explanation for it, but we know there's something happening. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, and I've used this scripture throughout this week, because it's so important for us to be in Christ Jesus. We can't afford to just come to a pew and sit here on Sundays and read a word and not be in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's like I said last night. We can have information, but with no revelation, information it's not transformation. We need transformation in our lives. We need things to move. He says, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Hallelujah. Behold, yes. all things, all things, all things become new. Praise God. All things become new. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16 says this. And this is, this is important. Pastor Don spoke about this earlier. Folks, we have to realize that there is no inheritance without adoption. Amen. 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 That's right. I don't care how you want to package it up and how you want to justify your life. There is no inheritance without adoption. And we need to be in Christ Jesus. We need to be led by the Spirit to be adopted. He says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And he goes on to say that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Oh, so if you got a question that, you might want to check your walk. Praise God. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 39 says this. And this is how we get, this is more, more um, prophecy. Jeremiah said that and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear and what fear means in this context the, the uh, Hebrew for it is to have a reverential awe towards me forever he's speaking about God for the good of them and of their children after them Amen. are we interested in seeing a loved one saved. Amen. See, God's not just trying to do something in you. He's trying to do something for generations to come. Hallelujah. So if you're not letting that word sink into your heart, how is it supposed to sink into your children's heart? How are they supposed to get a, a grip and a grasp on who God is? Go ahead. If you don't even know. Mm -hmm. right. John 15, 5 through 7 says this, and this is how. We have to live our lives, man. We have to live our lives from this posture. I am the vine. This is Jesus speaking. John chapter 15, verses 5 through 7. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. We cannot bring forth fruit if we're not in Christ Jesus. It's impossible. It's impossible. For without me, ye can do nothing. And he says, if any man abide not in me, this is radical. Jesus is radical sometimes. He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And then gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. But here's the good news. He says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, if, the, if his words abide in you, you shall, you shall see, you, sh, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. 
country. So Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We take on this new nature called righteousness and holiness and wholeness when we are delivered from our sin nature, from our sin heart condition that we're in. And we walk in this newness of life and the resurrected power of Jesus Christ when we take on his heart because he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Jeremiah 17 10 says, I the Lord, and this is what God does, and this is what we don't want him to do. He says, I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins. Try the reins just means he tests our mind, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. He tests the mind. What are you letting in your mind? What are you allowing to creep into your mind that's not of God? I want to challenge people to take their walk a little bit further. Start checking yourself. Don't allow the enemy open access to everything in your life. Amen. Because he only has the authority that we give him. I spoke about that last night. If we give him the authority, yeah. he'll take if we give him an inch, take him on. he'll take a mile. Yep. We have to watch ourselves. We have to guard our hearts. The Bible says, guard our hearts, for out of it flows the issues of life. So what issues are, are you facing from not guarding your heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his joy. Now, I won't talk much longer here. I want to talk about Psalms 51 here because it's, it's a real expression of David's repentance. David, he was the greatest king of Israel and he fell into some serious sin. And he recognized the need, you know, his need to plead with God for forgiveness. And this confession was inspired by David's sins of adultery, deception, and even murder in his relationship with that sheep. So I want to read out of uh, Psalms chapter 51, verses 10 through 13. And we have to not mimic David in his sins, but we need to mimic David because he was an example of true what true repentance was. David says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're only concerned with getting cast away from God's presence when we're in his presence. We got to step in his presence. We got to be more concerned with his presence and yielding to him and becoming in right relationship with him, so close to him that we don't ever want to let go of him. Amen. He says, cast me not away from thy presence and take thy Holy Spirit, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, watch this. Oh, glory, hallelujah, this is good. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto me. Hallelujah. The devil don't want you converting nobody. We have to step in David's shoes and have a heart of repentance. We have to live from a posture of being on our knees and seeking God's face. In conclusion, I just want to encourage every one of us to live our lives from a place of repentance. And all repentance is, it means to change our mind. We have to go in the opposite direction where sin wants to take, take us. And I remember listening to an old song a while back. And it, it, it's called, Sin Will Take You Farther Than You Want to Go. So let's allow God to cleanse the filthy places in our hearts. Way too many times I've seen believers justify sin instead of calling it what it is. And sin has one agenda, just like the enemy. It comes to kill it comes to steal. It comes to destroy your lives. So we have to turn our hearts to Jesus and allow him in and to cleanse our hearts. Praise God. Amen. Every day, God.
Glory be to God. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come to you right now to repent, Jesus. We want to repent from anything that has separated us from you in, the, in time past, Jesus. We want you to touch our hearts and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. We want to be filled with your glory and with your presence, Jesus. We just ask that you would just touch each and every heart here tonight, Lord. That we all would want to have a posture and live from a place of repentance. And that you would just heal us, Lord. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for the mighty work that you've done within us, Lord. And we ask that you just continue to move on our behalf. In our situations, in our circumstances, Lord. In our family's circumstances, Lord. In the children's circumstances, Lord. We ask that you would touch them, Lord. That we would have a heart so pure, Lord, that when they see the fruit of our righteousness, Lord, they would get a hold, a true hold of exactly who you are. And be converted. And come to a place of healing and restoration and divine deliverance. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Amen.